Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. As we know, most of the Blackstone Fortress expansions are incredibly hard to get now, and prices on the secondary market are increasing all the time. And those prices are actually getting pretty crazy. The craziest price I think I've seen so far, and probably the one that hurts my heart the most, is on eBay I have seen copies of Blackstone Fortress Abominable Intellect listed at a hundred pounds or more. I cannot stress strongly enough that this expansion is not worth that much money and I would strongly recommend people think twice before considering putting down that much cash on a deck of 34 cards. Anybody who has watched my previous content on Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress will know that Abominable Intellect for me was the weakest expansion. It is the expansion that adds the least to the game. For those of you who don't know, it was an attempt to increase the overall difficulty of the game. And it did that by presenting you with a new deck of encounter cards that effectively increased the size of the spawns of the enemies that you would meet, which meant you would then need to buy more miniatures in order to field larger groups of enemies. I didn't think that was an elegant or enjoyable way to increase the difficulty, and I have never used the cards in that manner. However, each card in the deck also included a twist. As you can see on this example here, the fourth point on the encounter card is the twist missed opportunities, and every single card in the deck has one of these twists. So for me, the most effective way to use this expansion was just to lean into using those twists. And there are several ways you can do that. One is whenever you draw a normal encounter card that has a twist on it, rather than applying the twist from the original card, you draw one of these abominable intellect cards and play that twist instead, or play that in addition to the twist on the other card. Or you could actually draw an abominable intellect card every time you have an encounter so you always have an additional twist but even then not all of the twists are great some of them actually add a little bit to the game they make you think a little bit differently about how you are going to enter into a combat but some of them are a little bit weak source really they fall into three main categories there are the twists that restrict your options they will do things like take away destiny dice, or more annoyingly, take away your activation dice. And yes, that does successfully ramp up the difficulty because if you have less activation dice on your character board, you have less options in your turn, you are going to struggle more to achieve what you need to achieve before the enemy retaliates. But it also has the potential to make the game drag a little bit. You are already dealing with wounds and grievous wounds which take away your activation dice. Having extra dice taken away in that manner can cause the game to grind a little bit and can become a little bit frustrating rather than challenging. The second type of twists are the ones that just directly inflict wounds on your characters. And this kind of does the same thing as the ones that restrict your options. They put a wound on your character card, which means you have less activation dice, but also, of course, they bring you closer to being defeated. And again, that does successfully increase the challenge, but it's a little bit infuriating, and it's not always a lot of fun just having wounds directly applied to your characters. The third type of twists are the ones that are the most interesting to me. They are the ones that make the enemies tougher or change the battle in some way so that strategies you might normally employ are changed in some way. That to me is how you improve the challenge of a game. You don't just make it annoying. You don't just apply wounds or take away options. You change the set of circumstances that your players are presented with so that they have to think on their feet and they have to try something new. Furthermore, making enemies tougher means they stick around for longer, they're on the board for longer. You get the effect of having larger spawn groups without having to invest in more miniatures because the miniatures you have just stick around for longer. So where am I going with this meander talking about an expansion that a lot of people cannot get anyway? Well, I thought I would go through the cards and pick out my favorite twists to talk about them in turn and why I like them. And it just so happens that I have picked exactly 20 twists. So I guess if somebody wanted to put those 20 
into a chart and then whenever they wanted to apply one they could roll a d20 refer to their chart and actually apply that twist to their games even if they don't have the abominable intellect cards i guess they could do that really you just need to type them up into a chart oh and by the way just in case you have trouble um understanding my accent if you look down in the video description for this video i have actually put out a transcript of all 20 of my top picks just in case you want to read them there so let's dive in my top 20 abominable intellect twists first up we have bleeding out treat the recuperate one plus action as a recuperate four plus action in this combat there is an argument that this actually falls into the restricting options category but i find it's just one of those twists that makes you think a little bit differently how you're going to use your activation dice and of course it makes it harder to actually recover those wounds when you are injured and you might have to use some of your weaker dice miss out on some of your high powered attacks just to make sure you stay alive uneven footing in this combat explorers with agility d12 have agility d8 and explorers with agility d8 have agility d6 instead it's just a little nerf it's not something that's going to massively impact the combat but it does make a slight difference sometimes low lighting in this combat add one to the cost of all weapon actions that target a hostile at range two or more to a maximum cost of six plus for example the cost of a four plus weapon action would be increased to five plus this is going to stop you doing those sort of tactics where you hunker down behind cover and just take long range attacks at people it's a way of making you think a little bit differently about your positioning on the board you have to get a little bit closer to the enemy to become fully effective in the combat dying blows roll the blackstone dice each time a hostile is slain in this combat before it is removed from the battlefield if the result is 18 or more one adjacent explorer suffers one wound this is the kind of ability is going to cause problems for characters like the crusader who like to get up close and personal with the enemy again it's forcing you to rethink common strategies it's not hugely likely to trigger it's not going to cause massive amounts of problems but it's something that's always going to be in the back of your mind something you need to think about slow start explorers are no longer inspired flip their character card each explorer loses their inspiration points this is a horrible twist and also probably my favorite there are certain characters in the game that once they're inspired they stay inspired and this is a way of taking them back to their non-inspired state and that's something they then have to deal with of course taking away any inspiration points as well also means it's harder for them to inspire again immediately horrifying regeneration remove one wound counter from each hostile after the destiny phase in this combat this is one of those abilities that makes all of the enemies on the board tougher and i like that more than adding more enemies i don't like having huge hordes of miniatures to move around i would rather have fewer tougher ones on the board and this card achieves that out of time to attempt a gambit in this combat the player who controls the explorer must spend one activation dice with a value of four plus instead of any activation dice on their character card I don't know if you're like me but i use gambits a lot it really helps to structure the battle to come and this makes it a little bit harder to set up those real killer combos that you want to pull off and of course it prevents you from pulling off one of your more powerful abilities sometimes rising frenzy add five to all hostile behavior rolls in this combat to a maximum of 20. of course this just makes the enemies a little bit more fighty and a little bit more keen to get involved in taking you off the board flush them out explorers do not receive the benefit of cover in this combat a common strategy is to take full advantage of cover take full advantage of long range attacks and this is one of those cards that's going to make you think a little bit differently about how you set up on the board and how you are going to approach killing the different enemy teams endless waves in this combat at the end of the destiny phase return one slain hostile from each hostile group to the battlefield as reinforcements if you ever find that reinforcements don't return to the field quick enough this is one of those twists that will change that because you are constantly going to have a stream of new enemies appearing every single turn soul graft each time a hostile is slain in this combat each other hostile heals a wound this is another one of those twists that makes the 
enemies a little bit tougher, makes them stick around for a little bit longer. I think it's pretty common practice to concentrate fire to take down enemies one at a time rather than spreading wounds across enemies. But if you tend to scatter your wounds around a little bit, this is one of those cards that's going to make you think a little bit differently about how you are approaching killing those enemies. Enhanced weapons. Each explorer has defense D6 in this combat. This is a nerf on all of the heroes that is going to make you a little bit more wary of enemy attacks. It's going to make you think about how to avoid as many attacks as possible and of course take full advantage of cover. Eager for Blood in this combat replace any hold results on behaviour tables with advance. This is just again one of those abilities that's going to push the enemy into getting into combat with you. They're going to try and get up close as often as they can. Blase. When making an inspiration roll in this combat, that roll must be equal to or less than the highest wounds value of a single hostile slain by that explorer during their activation instead of the total combined wounds value. This is just making it more difficult to acquire the inspiration points. And of course, inspiration points are very useful for a number of reasons. Inescapable Blows treats critical successes as successes in defense rolls for explorers in this combat. This means you're more likely to pick up wounds in this particular combat. So again, you need to think about how you're approaching the enemies, how you intend to soak those wounds, how you intend to avoid them. Unprepared, in step two of each initiative phase, the hostile initiative cards are shuffled and set up first, then the explorer's initiative cards are shuffled and set up along the remaining spaces of the combat track. This just means that the hostiles are always going to get the drop on you. You can still use gambits and things like that, but you're more likely going to have to use more dice to set up those structures that you need to be effective in the combat. Panicked shots. Treat the aiming 1 plus action as aiming 4 plus in this combat. Aiming is very powerful in this game. It is recommended to use it quite a lot, and this just makes it more difficult to do. Dulled reflexes. Reduce the value of Overwatch dice by 2 instead of 1 in this combat. First remove any dice with a score of 1 or 2. Again, Overwatch is a very powerful ability. It's a really good idea to save some dice, set up some covering fire so that when enemies appear, you can start taking them down. This just makes it harder to set up that kind of system. Wave after wave, subtract 10 from all reinforcement rolls in this combat to a minimum of one. So if you're finding that you don't often get reinforcements coming back onto the board, you can apply this twist and you are more likely to get enemies coming in each turn. And of course, you can adjust that value however you want. If subtract 10 seems like too much, make it subtract five or whatever. Finally, we have missed opportunities. Inspiration points cannot be spent to reroll action dice in this combat. Pretty straightforward. You just cannot rely on rerolls. And that is it. My top 20 abominable intellect twists. As I mentioned at the top of the video, this is my least favorite expansion. It adds the least to the game. It is certainly not worth anywhere close to what people are charging for it on eBay. But I do think grabbing some of these twists and dropping them into your games can shake things up a little bit. Maybe give the heroes something different to think about. And maybe someone out there will find this video a little bit useful. Maybe it will inspire them to come up with their own twists. Maybe it will encourage someone to try out the new house rule. I don't know. I'm just chatting, really. But I guess that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.